Hello crafty friends, welcome to the first in a sporadic series of videos called Use It or Lose It in which I go through some of my crafty supplies and try to use them up because they've been in my stash for so long and remained unused that I really can't justify keeping them anymore. So the first crafty item that I am going to tackle is enamel dots. I don't have many, I've used most of them up, but I had about three sheets, some orangey ones, some tealy coloured ones and some purple ones. So today I'm going to tackle enamel dots and make three cards with the dots that I have left. For card number one, I decided to create some apertures in a panel of smooth white cardstock using some circle dies. I then placed my panel over a card blank and drew in the circles with a pencil so I could see where my apertures were going to be. And then I took a speckled egg distress oxide and brushed on some ink so the speckled egg would be visible when I put the panel with the apertures in on top of the card blank. Next I took my teal and minty green enamel dots and added them over the ink in a random-ish arrangement. I used all the different sizes, all the different colours. I also brought in the orangey peachy ones because orange and teal are complementary colours to one another. And I kept bringing the aperture panel back in to see what it looked like. And if I felt I needed to add more enamel dots, that's what I did. Before adding my panel onto my card blank, I decided I wanted to give the apertures some frames. So I took the circle dies, laid them one inside the other, and ran that through my die cutting machine with a bit of smooth white cardstock, and that cut out some frames, which I then added to the panel using high tack glue. And that gives the front panel a bit more of a finished, polished look. Once that was all in place, I added some foam tape to the back of the panel and then stuck this to my card blank. Obviously at this point the card still needs finishing, but I decided to set it aside and work on my second card. And for card number two, I went for a heart motif. So I recently found these big wonky heart dies at my local crafty charity shop, so I thought I'd use those. To start with, I just cut two sizes, a big one and a slightly smaller one. The big one I coloured with speckled egg, the slightly smaller one I decided to leave white. And then I cut a third one, even smaller, and I coloured that in salvage patina, so it had a bit more impact than the other hearts. Next I added some foam tape to the back of the white heart, and I then popped the white heart in the middle of the speckled egg heart and there's a nice bit of dimension there and this is where the enamel dots came in so I decided to add the enamel dots all over the speckled egg heart tucking some under the white heart again I started with the teal and the minty green dots and then I brought in the peachy ones I did chop with my scissors a few of the enamel dots in half so that I could add them to the edge of the big heart to make it look as if the heart had been cut from a larger piece of very dimensional paper. One of the reasons that I wanted to use up my enamel dots is because they are old and lots of them have lost their sticky and the ones that haven't lost their sticky have stuck really well to the plastic sheet that they're on. And when I try to get them off, it's virtually impossible to do so without pinging them across the craft room. So I think some crafty supplies do have 
expiration dates, especially if they're self-adhesive. Over time, unused, the self-adhesiveness can uh, go a bit awry. They can either lose their adhesiveness or they can just really stick where they shouldn't. So it's worth using your supplies before they go out of date, I think. Once I'd finished adding all my enamel dots, I decided that I wanted to bring a bit of the orange from the background into the foreground. So I brought out my colour swatch tags and looked through my oranges to see which ink would most closely resemble the dark orange enamel dots. And I chose Bellini from the Catherine Pooler ink collection and inked a heart that I had cut from smooth white cardstock with the smallest die in this set. I then added the salvaged patina heart. I did put two other die cut hearts underneath that to give it a little bit of lift, not as much as craft foam, but a few millimeters. And then I added the orange heart straight on top of that. When thinking about the kind of card base I wanted to add this heart to, I decided on a square card because I felt the heart would sit really nicely on a square base. Before sticking the heart to a card panel though, I scored three lines towards the left hand side of a square panel, glued that onto a card blank and then glued the heart on top. The three scored lines just add a little bit of interest and anchor the heart down so it's not floating around. And then again I set the card aside and started work on card number three. I thought I'd keep it really simple for card number three and just add enamel dots in a repeating pattern in straight lines down the front of my card. So I've got a five by seven card blank here. I've added a panel of smooth white cardstock to the front and I'm using my T-square ruler to line up my enamel dots so they're all perfectly lined up, funnily enough. This did take a little while, but I was determined to use all my enamel dots. And I did. I did get through all three remaining packs of enamel dots. And now the only enamel dots I have in my stash are some teeny tiny ones that I use fairly regularly on cards and I don't feel the need to use them up. So do you have anything in your stash that might be appropriate for a use it or lose it cleaning spree. If you have, do let me know in the comments because I might have something similar in my stash and then I could create some cards using what I have and that would give you some ideas of how you could use up those things in your stash. So do let me know in the comments. Right, now it's time to finish off the cards. So here we have our three bases, I guess you'd call them. They're not finished cards. And I did manage to use up every single enamel dot apart from a couple that flew across the rim. So I'm gonna just take these now and finish them off for you. I showed this one to my daughter and she said it looks really good. It looks like bacteria growing in a Petri dish. But I'm gonna add just a couple of things to the front of this to finish it off. I've got a gold leafy branch, die cut from gold foil cardstock. Just add a little bit of high tack glue here and there and layer it over my Petri dishes. And I think I will add a little bit of foam tape to this and this just to stop them flapping around. For my sentiment, I'm going to layer on this pre-stamped and pre-cut You're the Best. I'm not going to add any more foam tape to this. I think it's got enough dimension. And that's that one finished. I did think, though, that you could turn this into a shaker card. So you could pop some acetate behind the apertures, keep the enamel dots in the background, but maybe just add a little bit of glitter and then it would shake. The enamel dots obviously would stay where they were and the glitter would shift around to make it really pretty. So that's card number one done. Card number two is even easier. 
I think it's pretty much a complete card. As it is, it just needs a sentiment. And as we've got hearts, I've chosen this sending lots of love sentiment. Again, that's just pre stamped and pre cut. I had a bit of a stamping and cutting session last night, so I'm now well stocked for pre printed or pre stamped, pre cut sentiments. So I think that's finished. Don't think it needs anything else. Now, quite frankly, this is probably the most peculiar background to a card I've ever made, <laughs> but I'm going to stick with it. I used up all my purples and the last few pinks. And I do like that kind of falling circle in a straight line design. But I want to give the panel a doodly black border. I think it just needs something around the outside. It doesn't matter if it overlaps these enamel dots. It just adds another sense of depth and layering. And now I've got a few die cuts to layer on top. So I cut a Polaroid type frame out of gold foil cardstock, back to in vellum, and I've added some foam tape so that it's lifted up above the enamel dots. I have left gaps in the foam tape where I think it's gonna sit over the dot. So it sits flat on the card. So I'm gonna have this here, a jaunty angle positioned, as I say, to avoid putting foam over any enamel dots but also so that plenty of the dots show through. I did earlier when I was having a look at this card move these four dots from here because I thought when I've layered everything up they'll be hidden and I, I felt I needed something else over here so I moved those that was easy enough to do. I've got some postage stamps here that I've cut from a bit of background, a bit of leftover background from my box of bits and back, backgrounds, I can't speak today. And I chose this one because it's purpley and it's got this colour and this colour in it and it brings a bit of the colour to the foreground. And for my sentiment I have die cut happy birthday, I've got a glossy black word and I made that by putting packing tape over some black cardstock before I die cut it and then I pop them on their white shadows so the black text ties in nicely with the black doodly border and I'm thinking this could go here just to bring that colour forward. And I'll position that so that you can still see this row of dots poking out and these dots that you can see vaguely through the vellum. So we'll have the birthday over to the right of the frame. And the happy over to the left of the frame. And I think what it needs is some dots on the front, but I'm going to add white ones just here maybe five and that brings the white to the front as well as having this white here. I think I want to extend the wobbly lines so they need to go to the end of the panel. And I'm going to add a bit of weight to them by bringing in a thicker pen and just colouring in some of the empty spaces. Right, I'm going to leave that one alone now. I think I'm going to christen that one as the most peculiar card I've ever made. But that's okay because not every card we make is going to turn out how we envisioned it or even in a way that we enjoy. But as I say, that's okay. That's life, that's card making. We learn from the ones that we don't like. So I think I really, really like this one. So this is a hit. I think for me, this is a miss. 
And this is a maybe because I really like it, but now all I can see is bacteria grown in a Petri dish. So anyway, we've used my enamel dots, we've created three cards and we've learned what we like and what we don't like. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. Hope it's been helpful and given you some ideas. If it has, please leave a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments, subscribe and ring that notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.